Hello, Namaste. Uh, welcome to VTU e Shikshana program. Greetings to everyone. Uh, we are dealing with the course Building Services 3, 18 ARC 63, BARC 6th semester for this session of uh, even semester 2021. I, Dr. Daksha Patil, Associate Professor at BMS College of Architecture, Full Temple Road, Bangalore. Welcome all of you and thank you for being uh, here with us. So, uh, of the course, there are five modules of which modules one and two I will be discoursing for the session. Uh, this is an overview of the syllabus, uh, module one and two. Module one, uh, section number one, we have completed, that is introduction to mechanical ventilation. Uh, which dealt with understanding the definition of mechanical ventilation, uh, certain basic standards and the various types of mechanical ventilation systems. So we will proceed with the second section uh, in this particular video that is introduction to air conditioning and uh, these are the references, recap uh, that are listed in the syllabus also, there are various other additional references that we can be following. One of them being uh, Air Condition Principles and Systems by Edward Peter. And uh, also a reminder again to uh, go through National Building Code and the IS codes and the ASHRAE website for further uh, standards released uh, time to time on HVAC uh, standards. So, proceeding, module 1, section number 2, introduction to air conditioning. And this particular section with uh, deal with, will deal with psychrometric processes and requirements, air and refrigeration cycles, because uh, refrigeration cycle forms the uh, fundamental process for any type of air conditioning system. Basics of uh, load calculations zoning and air distribution and heating system. So these will be the components that we will be uh, understanding uh, ahead across the uh, module section number 2. So let us begin our understanding on the physical principles, fundamental principles of thermodynamics. Now the whole discipline of heating, ventilation and air conditioning is based on the concept of refrigeration which is reliant on the physical properties of air. Now as an architect while designing a building with a HVAC system essentially will have the following components. So at the concept a stage of designing a building, the HVAC component of servicing has to be conceptualized, thought of and detailed. So you will be uh, coordinating with the various consultants on this particular uh, service provision. It will deal with installation of the various equipment uh, required to run the HVAC so, in the physical uh, spatial plan of the building, these have to be located and assigned the space. Because uh, HVAC services will comprise about 15 to 25 percent of the spatial uh, uh, requirement in a plan. So, that is one thing. And another is up to um, 45 to 60 percent of the energy consumption also happens because of a uh, HVAC. Then there is the uh, operation and maintenance component of the uh, HVAC uh, services and post uh, occupancy and uh, post occupancy maintenance and life cycle of the uh, HVAC services. So HVAC normally uh, when considered for large scale projects is the domain of a mechanical engineer right and uh, it comes along with coordination with other related consultants with respect to uh, electrical 
structural plumbing etc and architect becomes the uh, supervisor or the main coordinator between all these uh, services and service providers or consultants the organizational flow chart uh, with respect to two stages of the building design the first one being the concept planning and design stage where the architect becomes the mediator between the client the owner and other consulting engineers at the construction stage the architect dons the main responsibility and uh, he will supervise or oversee all the other services with the general contractor who becomes a mediator between the architect and the uh, engineers or subcontractors with respect to structural plumbing electrical hvac interiors landscape etc so that is the prominent role the architect uh, has at both these stages of the uh, design and construction now why do we have to understand the fundamentals because on these fundamental principles the entire uh, gamut of refrigeration uh, industry is based on so we have to acquaint ourselves with the uh, basic concepts principles technical terminologies uh, and various measurement units so let us uh, un uh, begin the uh, brief understanding or acquainting ourselves with the terms units units of measurement basically we will use uh, actually hvac industry toggles between the us system or the english system of measurement and the metric system and we normally adopt the metric system or the si system mass mass m is the quantity of matter a body contains kilogram is the uh, unit uh, we use force the push or pull that a body may exert on another body newton weight weight is not mass but it is a force exerted on a body due to the gravitational pull of the earth density mass per unit of volume of a substance and specific volume is a reciprocal of the density that is v is equal to volume divided by mass heat heat is a form of energy which is transferred between two systems by virtue of temperature difference it cannot be destroyed but can be transferred from one object to another this is a very very important definition that we have to acquaint because the refrigeration principle and air conditioning systems are based on nothing but heat and the concept of transferring of heat from higher to the lower temperature so i think this is a basic or the foundation on which the entire refrigeration uh, is based on now what is temperature the measure of the thermal activity in a body it is the intensity or level of heat the unit used is fahrenheit or celsius and these are the conversion factors between celsius and fahrenheit proceeding heat always moves or is transferred from a warmer place to a cooler place basic property of the uh, heat hot objects in a cooler room will cool to room temperature and cold objects in a warmer room will heat up to the room temperature so basic Uh, principles governing the heat and a look at the various units of heat that are adopted 
or colloquially uh, used in the industry british thermal unit calorie and joule so these three will be frequently come across while calculating the heat loads and these are the various uh, conversion factors amongst the three units now the next terminology sensible heat when heat added to or removed from a substance results in the temperature change but not a change in the state is called a sensible heat change okay so you are adding heat or removing and it only results in the temperature change of the um, substance but does not affect the state of the substance whereas latent heat is when the heat added to or removed from a substance results in a change in state of the substance that is called as latent heat change latent heat of vaporization the enthalpy increase as it changes from a liquid to a vapor is called as latent heat of vaporization the opposite of vaporization is condensation right so these are some of the important technical terms that we will come ahead uh, we will come across ahead while dealing with refrigeration cycle now we her uh, we uh, we came across the term enthalpy what is enthalpy it is the property of a body that measures its overall or total heat content the energy content of dry air and moisture is expressed in kilojoules per kg of dry air it is also called as total heat content and the measure of the heat content in a substance and this enthalpy will be a sum total of the sensible heat and the latent heat now coming to the term specific heat it is the amount of heat in british thermal units required to change the temperature of 1 pound of the substance by 1 degree fahrenheit in us units so the processes that occur in hvac systems usually involve addition or removal of heat from air or water so kindly remember this because this is is going to be adopted ahead and that is the formula for calculating specific heat the sensible heat equation can be used to calculate the heat added or removed for most hvac processes where there is a temperature change but no change of state of the substance humidity the next terminology the amount of moisture present per mass or per unit volume of air relative humidity it's a percentage it is the ratio of actual amount of moisture present in air to the amount of moisture that air can hold saturation point so 100% rh will refer to the saturation point now the principle of thermodynamics it is a property of science or physics concerned with heat and temperature 
and their relation to energy and work. It is a study of the energy of a substance. And there are two laws, basic laws of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Heat cannot be destroyed or created, but can be changed from one form to another. In all energy exchanges, if no energy leaves or enters a system, the potential energy of the state will always be less than that of the initial state. It's but a property of the uh, substance or the system. So a thermodynamic process may be defined as the energetic evolution of a thermodynamic system proceeding from an initial state to a final state. So the journey it takes between the initial state and the final. So this we will be seeing in the uh, with the respect to the refrigerant which is used in a refrigeration cycle as it moves from its initial state to the final state. The paths through the space of thermodynamic variables are often specified by holding certain thermodynamic variables as constant like pressure or temperature. Now we will look at the forms of heat transfer. There, there are three modes, conduction, convection and radiation. So very essential to know these. Conduction involves a transfer of heat through direct contact of two bodies. The heat conductors conduct heat well, whereas insulators do not. Convection takes place in fluid medium as molecules move in currents. Heat rises and cold settles to the bottom. Radiation refers to transfer of heat through space due to the emission of electromagnetic waves. Energy from the sun, the solar energy being transferred to us here on the earth is radiation. Right? So, moving ahead, enthalpy H of a thermodynamic system is defined as a sum total of its internal energy U and the work required to achieve its pressure and volume. So enthalpy of a system, the total heat content has to be calculated. Now a diabetic process, what of uh, the thermodynamic processes that happens when the heat, the net heat transfer is zero. Now when can this be achieved? There are two ways. One, when the system is well insulated. Right? Now this consider this as a system. When you insulate the system, there is negligible transfer of heat and you can achieve net heat zero. Net heat transfer as zero. Or both the system and the surrounding are having the same temperature then the state system is stable. So unlike an isothermal process, an adiabatic process transfers energy to the surroundings only in the form of work. Now after understanding all these fundamental principles of thermodynamics, we move to the point of understanding the comfort conditions for humans in a given indoor uh, environment which we will call as the system. Now human comfort uh, essentially or broadly is based on four factors. right? One, the air temperature which has 
quite a significant uh, influence on the comfort perception by a, a human being or the user of a space. Secondly, the relative humidity, also a critical component. Thirdly, air movement, the way the velocity of air movement in the space. Fourthly, another crucial fundamental aspect, the air quality. So these four form the four main foundations of achieving uh, or on which a human comfort level is assessed or based. So air temperature is a condition of a thermal neutrality under which the body needs need not strain to reduce or increase the heat loss. Relative humidity, amount of perspiration and respiration which are dependent upon the degree of saturation of the air. Air movement, so high temperature, increased air velocity may be preferred. Low temperature generally leads to uh, uh, saturated draft conditions in the given space. Air quality, definitely the quality of air um, controlling the amount of impurities that a person breathes in has to be uh, modulated. Now all these can be studied by the science of psychrometry. Psychrometry which ends up as uh, plotting of charts, psychrometric charts, is a very essential tool in understanding or calibrating human comfort conditions in an indoor given environment. So the physical and thermal properties of moist air in a graphical format and a very useful tool for air conditioning engineers. So now we will understand what is psychrometry. Psychrometry is a branch of engineering science which deals with the study of air water vapor mixtures under various sets of conditions. It determines the physical properties of air and the processes involved in air conditioning which are quite complex and difficult to comprehend otherwise can be easily determined by the psychrometry and its plotting of the chart. So it is essential uh, that we acquaint ourselves with the psychrometry and its charts to analyze and derive suitable parameters to design a good efficient AC system for our buildings. Now what are psychrometric charts? It is basically a graph that plots the thermodynamic properties of moist air at a constant pressure. The changes occurring in air as it is subjected to the air conditioning processes can be very well traced, easily analyzed and predicted through the use of psychrometric tables or charts. So it's a very handy um, tool for engineers and architects to calibrate and design efficient AC parameters to achieve human comfort. So what are the uses and why are we using these charts? First thing, it's quite accurate. Uh, in uh, practically deriving and studying the various AC processes. Another best advantage is it is very easy to read the various parameters. It presents a great deal of information in a simple manner and very easy to analyze. It reduces complex mathematical calculations which can be traced easily on this kind of a graph and it has a universal appeal. The graph is the same anywhere in the world so has a larger uh, application base. This is an example how on how a chart might 
look looks complex with a lot of lines but we will try to dissect and understand these lines ahead making it simpler to perceive all right so the same chart uh, very briefly drawn here you will see lots of terminologies dry bulb temperature specific volume wet bulb temperature specific enthalpy saturation moisture content specific enthalpy right so we will uh, now dissect this and understand what each term and what each line will mean the whole uh, branch is now based on understanding physical properties of air and the terms let us begin with the first basic terminology dry bulb temperature dbt it is the temperature of air recorded by a normal thermometer when it is not affected by the moisture present in the air the dbt is generally denoted as td or tdb and short form is dbt the si units kelvin degree celsius also we uh, parallelly use fahrenheit or degree rankine wet bulb temperature it is measured with a thermometer whose bulb is covered in wet cloth or wet wick dipped in distilled water the wbt is always lower than the dbt but will be identical with 100% rh so we use the slim thermometer to measure wbt okay, so slim thermometer has a provision of a normal thermometer to get the dbt value and uh, the thermometer which is soaked in wet wick to get the wbt the next terminology is dew point temperature the temperature at which water vapor in the air would begin to condense if the air were cooled at constant pressure so this is when we notice on uh, surfaces of uh, objects when <clears throat> water appears uh, begins to appear as dews so dew point temperature moisture content or humidity ratio it is the weight of water vapor per pound of dry air whereas relative humidity which is uh, expressed as a percentage is the ratio of actual water vapor pressure in the air to the vapor pressure if the air were saturated at that uh, dry bulb temperature specific volume it is the volume of air per unit weight of dry air specific enthalpy heat content of air per unit weight now the psychrometric chart primarily shows the relationship between uh, the following four main aspects dbt <coughs> wbt rh and dew point temperature but alongside these four there are other uh, parameters such as moisture content enthalpy specific volume saturation point which can be calibrated as well if any of the two factors are known right among the four that we saw we can ascertain the remaining two parameters from the chart so that makes it uh, simple to use and easy to analyze now given two independent properties we can locate the condition of air on this psychrometric chart as they will intersect the only uh, abiding principle or parameter is the properties must be independent for example if we know the dew point temperature and the moisture content we can we cannot locate the point as the constant dew point and constant lines are parallel to each other so we need 
two parameters that intersect on the graph to locate that point which will determine the property of air hmm? that is the temperature pressure at that point now let us understand each uh, line in the graph and what it indicates the vertical lines in the graph the first figure it shows the dry bulb temperature constant dry bulb lines that is any and all points on one given line have the same dry bulb temperature as indicated at the bottom of the dry bulb scale slant lines they indicate wbt wet bulb temperature constant wet bulb lines run downward at an angle of approximately 30 degrees all points on one given wb line are at the same wbt so now we understood two lines in the graph the vertical lines dbt slant lines wbt moving on horizontal lines indicate specific humidity constant specific humidity lines are horizontal and coincide with the constant dew point lines thus we can see that the amount of water vapor in the air is, in de is dependent upon the dew point of the air the fourth uh, aspect curved lines on extreme left curved line rather the dew point temperature or saturation line at this point air is having maximum possible moisture content in it so these are the two as two uh, lines in the graph the horizontal lines and the curved leftmost line specific humidity dew point temperature the curved lines that extend from the left to the right top give the RH you can see the percentage is quoted on the left side figure 10% up to 100% then the lines at an angle of approximately 60 degrees shown to the right side constant specific volume now there are this is the third set of slant lines called as enthalpy these lines are merely extensions of the wet bulb lines since the total heat of the air is dependent upon the wet bulb temperature that is dry air along with this moisture gives the enthalpy the scale at the far left of the chart gives the total heat of the air in BTU per LB British thermal unit per pound of dry air so all these lines are overlaid on the uh, psychrometric chart. This is an example construction of psychrometric chart showing lines of constant property values for dBT, humidity ratio, RH, specific volume, WBT and enthalpy. So constants uh, broken out as individual lines on the graph. All these become overlaid to get a comprehensive uh, plotting of the properties. Also these are uh, showing the tendency of uh, some of the aspects such as sensible heating and sensible cooling and how do they tend to occur on the graph so you see to the top enthalpy increases and below that uh, central point central tendency of one we have decrease in the enthalpy that is noticed or and similarly likewise sensible cooling sets in and sensible heating then you can look at the humidification and dehumidification from the central tendency point of 1 as you proceed up 
humidification sets in as you come down dehumidification it is all correlated with the increase or decrease in total heat that is enthalpy combined sensible and latent heat processes across the central point of one so you have cooling and dehumidification, heating and dehumidification, heating, humidification, cooling and humidification. So as you move up, we will notice increase in the humidity. So these uh, reveal central tendencies of the parameters. The so one comprehensive look, uh, if you have the given sensible, uh, given the central point, the tendency to that is observed on the graph as the points go up you can uh, deduce that humidification is set in sensible heating to the right sensible cooling to the left evaporative cooling chemical dehumidifying so what uh, we normally do is we plot the existing conditions we deduce the comfort conditions that our HVAC or AC would want to achieve and then plot the projected uh, parameters. So that will tell us on how to calibrate the uh, system settings or what should be the capacity of the air conditioning uh, system that we would want to design. Another example on how plotting takes place, jot down the points and understand zones of central ventilation, high mass cooling uh, and plot the human comfort zone which is hatched as slant lines there during summer and during winter. And the aspects of passive solar heating, humidification, evaporative cooling etc. So very well, wonderfully the graph helps or assists in plotting and reducing parameters for HVAC. So now let us all uh, do a quick exercise on determining and plotting comfort conditions for your respective cities wherever you are on a psychometric chart. Right. So that ends uh, this session. Uh, we will uh, proceed ahead with the next component in the next video. Thank you.